get it immediately. Hello again, this is a quick video to show you how to improve the quality of your renders. So we've got our scene, which I was just working on a moment ago, so take a look at that tutorial if you haven't seen it already, which is how to use um, uh, texturing and materials in Blender. Uh, and uh, this is for making your images uh, look that bit better in terms of the quality of the output. So I go back, I press escape out of this, because this is my rendered version. I press escape on this screen, there we go, it's happening. Um, here's my sort of preview screen over here, and here's my scene. As you can see, uh, it's the one we set up earlier. Uh, okay, so um, it's not looking great in here. It's looking very fuzzy still, uh, and it's on 10 samples. And the sample rate here is the quality that it will end up uh, being. Okay, and what you need to do to change that is you go onto this little camera icon here, which uh, is sort of your, your render tab. You click on that, and this gives you lots of options down here. If you want to uh, render, uh, you press that button as we've done already. Uh, if, you, if it was an animation, you want to render the whole animation, you click on the animation. Before you do that, you have to make sure you check the output option down here. This is, says where your files are going. It's alright if you're doing just a simple render. So I'll render it over here, and it's going to the temp folder and uh, you have to try and track that down. So you can change where this outputs to. Uh, let's say you're happy with this image actually and you think I want to save it. You can just come in here and go save copy. That's fine as well. So save a copy there or save as image or whatever. Um, but uh, you've got to remember that if you want to get back to this there is a little temp file that it's putting in your temp folder and you can change that on here. You do end up with this screen. You might not be used to this sort of format. It takes a little while to get used to and it's just saying it's in my C directory under temp, or TMP in this case, and you can create directories or move up, so here's all my files and stuff, you can move through them or just go to your desktop, that sort of thing, yeah. But I don't need to do that, I'm not going to do that, press cancel. Um, okay, so um, that's uh, where it's going in, in the output. Don't become confused by all these things, there's loads of things in here, and um, things like stamp you don't really need to know, um, so you can um, sort of minimize that and you obviously press that little arrow to get these menus up. Dimensions is going to be important because that's the size of the, the output file. And it's at, I've got it on 1920 by 1080, obviously that's um, eight full HD. And I'm actually rendering at 50% of that so it comes out half the size. And I could even go a bit smaller than that just for the sake of seeing my images and what they look like. And when you're testing things out, you want to make things uh, small and low quality to start with then start increasing the quality when you're when you're happy with the images okay that's quite important because it can go slowly once you up the rate um, and up the quality this is the important bit down here sampling okay where it says samples <clears throat> there's preview which is uh, 10 which is my preview over here and then there's, there's render so if I put the render up to 50 samples we can see what that does to the quality over here and what you'll see straight away is it's going a lot slower. Okay, I, there are ways of speeding this up, but I'm not going to go into that um, just yet. Um, I suppose whilst it's rendering, I might as well. Um, up the top here, um, it starts lagging once it's rendering over here. Um, you've got device, and on some machines, if you click on this, you can actually change it to GPU, which is your graphics card, basically your graphics processor unit or whatever it is. Um, and that tends to run a lot quicker than your CPU. Okay, um, so if you've got that function, uh, test it because it does tell you the time it's taken up here. Um, and test it, test the frame with GPU and test the frame with, frame with uh, CPU. Usually, your GPU comes out a lot faster. So use your GPU to render. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you can start to see the quality is improving. It's not so fuzzy. Uh, the scene doesn't look really that great. It's probably because the light's coming from this direct, well, straight above. So maybe we should just move that because um, we want it looking nice, really, don't we? So I'm going to rotate this around the x-axis, R, X, rotate it, and then make it come from an angle, maybe the front angle like that. That would look a bit better, I think. Now we can start seeing the monkey a bit more. That would be better, wouldn't it? Um, I suppose it's it's never good to... Ooh, one there. Never good to light a scene with just one... Well, it's... It's debatable that, but one light in a scene um, is not your classic lighting setup. So, um, can you remember how to duplicate? It's Shift D, 
Shift D will duplicate, and then I always right click so it's in exactly the same place. And then I can rotate this one around the Z axis. So give it a different angle there. And now I'm lighting it from two different angles. You should sort of partially see two shadows now, and we're starting to get a better scene. Uh, I'm just going to press uh, 0 to get the camera view, check my lights aren't in shot, <coughs> and you can see it's, it's actually starting to slow down now because I've got two lights in the scene, and the more light you have, uh, the slower, slower it becomes. Okay, and uh, let's put this up to 100 now, so remember we go down to samples down here, make sure you're on the little render tab, go down to samples or sampling, and put the samples up there. I'm going to actually reduce the size of it because there's no need to have it that big because it's going to start running slower, uh, about 25%. And let's uh, render again and see what we get. Oh, I was going to change it to the graphics card this time, GPU computes, and see if it goes any quicker. And as you can see, it's going a lot quicker. And it looks a little bit nicer now, doesn't it? We're getting uh, more shape and definition in these items. There we go. Hopefully that will give you some insight into uh, getting better quality images um, and do go back to your texture editor and start doing some interesting things with your textures here um, there's your uh, color there so let's let's change one of these to in fact I'm going to add a, a new sphere I've shifted duplicate that shift D and let's bring this out the front here you can, can you see it over here in my scene it's coming across there it's purple still because I copied the purple one I'll bring it, where shall I put this actually, so because I want to make it reflective so you can see what the reflections do. I'll put it here next to the monkey, that'll make more sense, there we go. Okay, I'm going to bring him over there, All right, and I'm going to change this one to glossy. Whoops, click on it again. If you move it too far away, it takes it off you, this dialog. Click on it and then go to glossy, and you can, oh, hang on, what, and it's changed both of them. Now, that's important to realize that I made a mistake there um, you need to actually add a new uh, material if you want this one to be different it's just going to change the same one because you might want both these to be um, a certain material so if I click on the, the old one I go add new and change that back to diffuse I press add just here add new material and change that back to in fact let's change this to something else let's change this to glass this time I have a sort of see through one it uh, looks a bit weird there, it doesn't look much like glass, um, but um, you can change the roughness and things like that, and uh, the IOR, I can't remember what that actually stands for, but that's kind of its thickness of the glass. Let's go back to this glossy one here, which is this one in the scene, and if you change the roughness, that sort of changes its uh, reflectivity, basically, uh, as if it's got a rougher surface, obviously roughness, a more rougher surface, so you can see it's making it uh, less reflective. Uh, let's render our scene and see what we've got. I can actually zoom into this image with my wheel mouse but obviously that's zooming into um, a sort of a PNG image or JPEG style image so it's all uh, pixelated. But, um, well let's go back to normal. There we go you can see reflective one. There's a glass one that is actually slightly reflective. Supposedly see-through as well but you can't really tell there. Um, that's the the basics of uh, materials there. Okay, hopefully that will give you some insight into getting better quality images and starting to use the material editor. Good luck in that!